Here's a rare bit of good news on this Labor Day weekend. A new assembly line filled with workers coming alive at a U.S. automaker. This is the General Motors Orion plant, just north of Detroit. They're cranking out a new subcompact, the Chevy Sonic. It's beautiful and the plant's ready to roll. Who's going to buy these products? Everybody, no. The, the Sonic will be the only subcompact built in America. But making it here instead of Mexico or Asia, where wages are much lower, required driving some hard bargains with the UAW. 11. New hires started about $16 an hour, half the usual salary. Gerald Johnson is GM's manufacturing manager. You got to be competitive and you got to be cost conscious. That means employing lots of robots. 25% fewer workers and only half the space of previous assembly lines. That's what it takes to do business these days. This isn't your father's Oldsmobile plant. They are trained on uh, multiple jobs. They uh, do rotation uh, every, every day so that they continue to maintain their skills in multiple jobs. It's a gamble that GM hopes will continue its recovery from bankruptcy. Once you've uh, been through winter, you have a great appreciation for spring and summer. And that's where you are right now, in spring and summer? I think we're in spring. But across the country, this summer has felt more like an economic ice storm. From the stock market. Tonight I want to talk about the debate we've been having in Washington over the national debt. To that unending debt debate. To the downgrade of the nation's credit rating. We're worried a lot about deficits and debt. We should be worried. That's a significant long-term problem. Harry Holzer is an economics professor at Georgetown University in Washington. But we have a major short-term problem with unemployment at this level, and it's going to scar people, people who are out of work years and years. You've heard the numbers. The unemployment rate has been stuck near the current 9.1 percent for more than two years now. 14 million of us are out of work. Then on Friday, the Labor Department reported that for the first time since 1945, the net change in the number of new jobs created in August was exactly zero. You've also probably heard that this comes at a time of record corporate profits. American companies have learned to do more and more with less and less. Everyone points to Wall Street and they say, corporate America, look at it, it's got $2 trillion. Why is it not spending that money? on hiring? Um, it seems to be uh, that they can either spend the money elsewhere and, and get the hiring done, which might mean going overseas, or they just prefer to do other things with the money. Maybe, sit, maybe they're more comfortable Sit sitting on it. on it or investing it uh, somewhere in, in the markets. If we can convince them <laughs> that there's money to be made by hiring workers, I'm, I'm sure they will be happy to do so, but they have to be convinced of that first. So what about the other half of the story? small businesses. The jobs picture doesn't look good there either. Only 4% now of the owners out there think it's a good time to expand their business and 70% say no way and the rest just don't even bother to answer the questions. Bill Dunkelberg is chief economist with the National Federation of Independent Business. He points to two issues. First, consumers whose confidence has plunged to the lowest level in two years aren't spending enough to get businesses hiring. And then there are those policy squabbles in Washington. How about some certainty about what my future looks like? What will my tax rates be? Uh, will Obamacare be uh, to, found to be unconstitutional? Or if not, what is the government going to ask me to provide as a minimum package for my worker? Isn't there always, though, in a business going to be uncertainty? I mean, if you start a business today, you don't know who's going to be in power, who's going to be elected in two years. They could change the entire dynamic. Is there something that is exacerbating that uncertainty at this point? Well, I think having everything up in the air right now um, seems uh, to be making it worse. So there are too many moving parts. Too many moving parts and too few areas of job growth, particularly for workers unprepared for a leaner, meaner economy. The number of manufacturing jobs has fallen by almost half 
in the last 30 years. In your book, you ask the question, where have all the good jobs gone? Where have they gone? Well, um, where they haven't gone, or, or where they are no longer, uh, is in manufacturing, uh, especially for very unskilled workers. There are good jobs in other sectors, certainly in healthcare uh, and in construction, um, in many other, in, in, in financial services and many other places. The bottom line is there are good jobs out there in a lot of different sectors, but workers need usually a higher level of skill to get those good jobs than they did in the past. How long you've been out of work at this point? Uh, one year. Tiffany Serrano decided she needed to go back to class after leaving the military and finding her training didn't translate into the civilian workforce. Especially since the job fields or, or organizations that I want to go into, uh, Google or anything with Veterans Affairs or even NASA, if I aim high, uh, you have to be very well skilled and have a lot of experience. When we talk about microcomputing and whatnot... So she um, came to Perscalis, a job training program in the Bronx, New York. It's what's called sectoral job training, teaching specific skills that lead to jobs in specific industries. In this case, IT, the people who fix your computer when it crashes. In this global economy, for our economy to remain vibrant, we need to invest in our labor force. And that requires for us a commitment by government, by corporations and foundations to invest in programs like these. Perscalis, or for schools in Latin, is nonprofit. Most of its funding comes from corporations and foundations, one fifth from government. And the objective here is to try and simulate what they'll experience on the job. Mm -hmm. Plinio Ayala, the president and CEO, says that four out of five graduates get a full-time job. The training that we provide here really matches what employers are looking for and the skill sets that our people leave here with. When you talk to employers, do you find that they're frustrated by the type of skills the average candidate comes to them with? There are thousands of IT jobs across this country that are going unfilled. And the primary reason that we hear uh, from employers as this being the case is the fact that they can't find qualified workers. I think we can do a much better job as a country of um, making the match between the job seeker and these job opportunities. And I think Jeff Weiner is the CEO of LinkedIn, the online professional networking site. He believes there are jobs out there if only the right people can find them. LinkedIn now has more than 120 million members, and Wiener's vision is a world that connects all the dots. Why doesn't every American uh, in the U.S. workforce uh, have a profile uh, so that people can understand their experiences, their skill sets, and why isn't every job opportunity digitized? And in an economy where many workers will have to reinvent their careers, Wiener envisions a digital crystal ball. We can begin to predict where the opportunities are going to be. We can begin to predict what skills are going to be required uh, to fill those opportunities. The 1,800 workers back at GM's Orion plan are seizing their opportunity and hoping its gamble will pay off with jobs that last. I think it's pretty tough out there right now. Um, I I'm glad I have a job. Brad Glendy and his fellow workers have their whole futures riding on the new Sonic. It rolls out to dealers in just a few weeks. I think everyone here is involved and wants, wants to make sure this product is a, a top quality car that our customer is going to enjoy driving. Because your job depends on it. All our jobs depend on it, yes.